For this video, I'm just going to talk about making the armor in general and general principles that you want to think about and general ideas that you want to use. I'm not going to go into the specifics of making each piece just because I feel that there's better source for that. If you go on YouTube, you can check out Eric Dubay. I checked him out while I was building my uh, suit of armor. He does a much better job of doing a step-by-step -step build process and how to do that, but he doesn't talk about um, things and concepts you want to think about when making the armor, so that's what I'm hoping to do in this video. So this is the arm, and most of the places you have in your suit of armor are going to be static, meaning they're not going to articulate, but there are going to be points that uh, do articulate, and those are going to be points that you want to pay particular attention to. So for the elbow, that's going to be obviously a huge part of articulation. And the way to do that when you're riveting together is you want to use a scrap sheet of uh, metal to basically space the two pieces of plate together that you plan on riveting. And then when you have it riveted, you can just remove the uh, scrap sheet of metal that you used so you're left with a gap between the plates that allow the plates to articulate freely. Uh, as a side note, you do definitely want to use nuts and bolts before you rivet anything together and make a permanent connection. Nuts and bolts are great to just make sure all your holes line up, everything works together as far as the entire unit or set of armor. The uh, shoulder here, you can see that there's dimpling. That was the ball peen hammer and some heat was used to just kind of bowl that out a little bit more. As a side note for the materials that I use for my armor, it's all 22 gauge mild steel, except for the breastplate, which is 18 gauge steel. Uh, it's not going to be the same as far as what an actual suit of armor would be. That's around 16 gauge steel. And I chose to do 22 gauge steel because everything that I'm doing is handmade. It's just from sheet metal that I bought from a sheet metal guy. It's leather that I bought from a leather guy. Even the belt buckles is just steel rods that I used to uh, bend into a shape of a belt buckle. So when using 22 gauge mild steel, that's a lot easier to work with as opposed to 16 gauge. And for my first suit of armor, I just kind of wanted to have something more easier to work with. So it was more forgiving um, for the mistakes that I made. And obviously there's a lot of mistakes that I made while making this armor. You can see pretty significant dings, gaps in the plates, scratches. It's not at all uh, expert quality. It's very amateur work, but it was a really good learning experience. And I do plan on making more in the future. So for the ones that I make in the future, uh, I'm hoping to make that much more better uh, quality craftsmanship. This is the breastplate. This is the one that's 18 gauge steel. For the breastplate, the thing that you want to think about is at the bottom of the uh, breastplate, you want to make sure that lip that I have extending out um, goes a little bit up where your hips are at. So when you bend, it doesn't dig into your hips. I actually have a big cardboard template that I use to make sure the size is correct. And that's really something that you want to nail when you're making the breastplate is you really want to make sure that when you bend at the waist, this doesn't dig into your hips. Otherwise, you won't be able to bend. For dishing it out, I used a tree stump, which I hammered a bowl into. And I used that as a surface that I worked with when making the breast and uh, back plate. So the back plate is actually 22 gauge mild steel. I t chose 22 gauge instead of another 18 gauge because I was actually not able to cut out the 18 gauge steel. The uh, guy that I bought it from was kind enough to cut out the pattern that I drew out. And it just cost some money, so I decided 22 gauge mild steel was fine, especially since I'm not fighting in any of this armor. It's just kind of for decoration. So this shows the uh, plate of the uh, breast and back together held together with the uh, leather straps when you do anything as far as connecting pieces of armor to each other whether you're riveting or you're just adding leather straps the rule of thumb for steel is measure everything five times before you make any alterations and that's because it's really easy to take material away from steel but it's near impossible to add material so you really want to be certain that you're confident in what you're doing before you make any alterations to the steel and once 
the steel this is the final polish state so if you're thinking that your steel is going to look nicer towards the end with a final polishing it does look a little bit nicer compared to what it was before but you're still going to have a lot of hammer dings that you think might get buffed out or grinded out and they stay there so planish 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 i didn't do as much planishing as i should this is obviously an amateur doing his first suit of armor but um, I'm overall I'm really happy with how it came out the uh, helmet here this is probably the most technically challenging piece just because pretty much all of it had to be blowtorch to get the metal to conform with each other and I took a little bit more care there because I knew the helmet was going to be a visual focal point so I'm pretty happy with how the plates actually overlap with each other in general And then for the eye slots, I just added a little bit of a uh, rise to it for kind of the aesthetic appeal of it, instead of just having a flat surface. So you can see right there, the steel was annealed to the point where it kind of cracked a little bit. Here's the uh, template for doing the helmet. If you guys want templates, I'll post templates, but until I get demand for it, then I don't really see the point in uh, posting those. Templates are great though for when making the suit of armor. It allows you to measure everything that you need to measure and then make alterations to what doesn't fit or anything that you really need to do just because paper is obviously going to be far easier to work with than steel. The problem with templates though is that they kind of give you a false sense of security and how your steel is going to play out. So here you might think that you have a fine articulating piece when it's riveted together, but the problem with paper is that it can be bended and it can kind of twist into the other pieces of paper really easily and you're not getting a lot of resistance. So that gives you that false sense of security that the piece you have is actually going to be articulating well. So steel is obviously going to be way more tougher than paper so what usually happens is you get one point of the steel that kind of connects to the other point of steel and that'll stop articulation dead in its tracks. For the uh, army jacket that I used, I just bought a jacket from the thrift store. Just get a jacket with some decent padding and make sure that the uh, fabric that you use is a dense weave fabric. And then I just added some leather tassels for the shoulder and arm portions. So here's just a demo of showing the armor working all together, moving. Uh, moves fine. I'm really happy with how it turned out. As far as the finish, I used uh, the 40 grit and then 220 grit. And then I went over with... Uh, olive oil and a buffing cloth so to give it just kind of that dull satin finish to it which is more generous when showing all the imperfections in the work so it's hard to get a mirror polish anyways but if especially if you're gonna make something for your first time expect to make mistakes and if you can hide those mistakes I guess and I kinda like the way that it turned out too So that shows you that it can move fine, but obviously as a suit of armor, it's going to be pretty loud. Not much of a surprise there. Uh, I'm sure I missed a bunch of information, so if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. And here you're going to see my brother Alex, the peasant, attacking me with a stick to show what armor can do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, now I don't feel good about it.